I wasn't born a liar. I'm sorry that you were. Now, did it make you horny? Amy Dunn dominates her role play. Jail time, you guys! That's crazy! This one's diabolical. Chicken run, but it was a hand job. should know about me it's that I have exclusively the right opinion when it comes to movies if you have a different opinion than me I'm so sorry to break this to you I don't know if anyone's ever told you this but you have the wrong opinion I'm so sorry those are just like the rules and I did put that in the description of my 2024 ranked list on letterbox so if you didn't see that that's like kind of on you so that paired with the fact that I haven't engaged in some light playful internet bullying in a minute it's just been leaving me feeling really hungry if you will for another ranking video so i asked all of you guys over on my instagram at money draws pack to submit to me movies that you have had sex to you fucking absolute freaks have i had sex while movies are playing yes do i remember them <laughs> no there's really only one that i remember which is donnie darko and the only reason i remember that is because we didn't finish the movie and then to make a long story short, things didn't work out between us. And then I finished the movie six months later because I remembered that I never finished it. And I was like, you know, that was pretty good before I got distracted. And I know I've had sex to other movies, but fuck if I know what they were. It's like the same deal with 69ing to me. I can't focus on two things at once. I can't give and receive pleasure at the same time. That is a scam. 69ing is a fucking scam. So in some ways, fucking while watching a movie is also a scam if you're like a movie buff. The way the rankings go in these types of videos is that the most questionable, the most bizarre, the most suspicious movies get ranked higher up on the list. Those will be the S tier, the A tiers, the like I'm impressed that you found a way to fuck to this type movies. And then the F tiers are the movies that I'm like, yeah, this movie's basically porn. I totally understand how you fucks do it. Now, before we get into all the movies I watched for today's video, today's video is sponsored by BB Outlet by Balesa. Balesa Boutique, you know them, you love them. They offer luxury pleasure products at luxury price points. BB Outlet is an offshoot of Balesa, the same high quality sex toys that you love, but this time at much more affordable prices. I have so many vibrators sitting in front of me right now. <laughs> These are all very affordable vibrators I got off of BB Outlet. So without further ado, let me show them off. As you can see, they come in this very simple silver packaging. The packaging that a product is in obviously contributes to the price point that it is set at. So this is one of the ways that they're able to keep the prices low. First up, we have the Thrusting Rabbit, which comes in at $34.99. This to me is a bedside drawer staple. If you don't have a vibrator like this, get one. This is the BB Tapping Rabbit. This one comes in at $39.99. Again, we've got dual stimulation going on, G-Spot, clit stimulation, waterproof, rechargeable, nine vibration modes, all of the good stuff. This is the BB Stim, which is a targeted clit vibrator. This one comes in at $16.99, and it comes with these interchangeable heads that you can just firmly pop in place for whatever your desire of the day is. This is a very sensual vibrator to me. This would also be very good as like a nipple vibrator. Next up, we've got the Palm Pilot, which literally straps on to your hand. This is obviously a clit vibrator with both suction and tapping functions. It's small, it's discreet, and also I really am loving the fact that it straps right to your fingers. The Palm Pilot comes in at $14.99. Next up, we've got the BB Air Pouch coming in at $14.99. This one feels like the most discreet for me. People would have no idea what this is. This could be a compact mirror, it could be a blush, it could be a lip balm for all we know, okay? Cap comes off to reveal it is yet another clit suction vibrator. So if price point has ever been the thing standing in your way from investing in your pleasure, no longer. BB Outlet is here. And like I mentioned earlier, today's video is of course a vibrator giveaway. BB Outlet and I are giving away free toys to absolutely everyone. And let me emphasize that I really do mean everybody. Every single person that drops their email in at that link will get a free toy added to their cart. Just click the link in the description of this video to claim your free vibrator. Maximizing your pleasure is literally one click away. So please go treat yourself, go claim those free vibrators. And without further ado, let's get into these movies that you guys have fucked to. <laughs> you guys submitted a lot of fucked up movies. Let's start there. Actually, I take that back. Let's start with the people that didn't read what I asked of them whatsoever so I can point and shame you for a second. <laughs> Boo! The amount of people that don't know how to read on the internet. Boo! Let me remind you of the prompt. The prompt here is I am looking for movies 
that you have had sex to. Just tell me the name of a movie. So naturally, someone submitted best song ever by One Direction. Hello? Yes, famously my favorite movie, best song ever by One Direction. Then somebody had the audacity and nerve and gall to submit something completely unexplainable, which is the entirety of season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. Huh? Number one, famously a TV show, not a movie, which while we're here, can I just say to all my Letterboxd heads out there, I need Letterboxd. Hey, Letterboxd, if you're listening, I need you to take limited series off Letterboxd. I know this is a hot take. I know that there are lots of people that want TV shows to be on Letterboxd. I am not a part of those group of people. I think they're actually working on that. And that I'm telling you right now, I'm protesting against it. Do not add TV shows to Letterboxd. In fact, remove the limited series off of Letterboxd. I am so against it. Letterbox is for movies. Limited series and TV shows are a totally separate thing with an entirely different scale of judgment. Oh, it just, it ruins it all in my brain. It's so unorganized. It's like a movie app and then we have some limited series on there. That is messy. I hate it. I have to pretend it doesn't exist in order to enjoy the app. I hate it. It's so unorganized to me. This is an app for movies. Get it together, people. But of course, someone submits the entirety of season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. And to this, I have many questions. The first of which being continuously. <laughs> Did you skip some episodes? Was it really every single episode? Were you doing it on purpose? It feels like it has to be on purpose if it's a TV show and you did it multiple times over. And I don't know if it makes it better if you did it all in one sitting over the span of like 12 hours. I don't know if that's better. So lots of questions, very little answers. Unfortunately for those submitters, um, that is not what this video is about, but thank you for telling me. <laughs> Chicken run. I saw this a few times. Uh, this one person said chicken run, but it was a hand job. Okay. Not sure that that makes it better. For clarity purposes, having sex to me means anything under the sun. Having sex is just, you're having sexual relations with another person. It can be fucking, it can be oral, it can be a hand job. Chicken run, but it's a hand job. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. Love it. They are kind of sexy in the same way Josh O'Connor and Mike Feist are kind of sexy. So since I am in my challengers era, I fear, <laughs> I do fear that maybe I could get down with this. They are kind of sexy. They are kind of sexy. They are. I Listen, I wasn't born a liar. I'm sorry that you were a chicken run, but it was a hand job, but it was a hand job was making it so much better to me. Chicken run, but it was a hand job and they're sexy and it was a hand job. <laughs> like, I don't want to get too excited and liken fucking to chicken run to fucking to challengers. Cause these are totally different things. It is an animation at the end of the day. So it is a little fucked up. I'll place chicken run firmly in B tier chicken run, but it was a hand job. Someone said they fucked a brother bear. So let's, let's hop in. Oh yeah, brother. <laughs> oh yeah, brother bear. <laughs> Would I personally fuck to a Disney cartoon movie? Probably not. I'm telling you, the, the bears are kind of hot. Not the little one. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's see. Why don't we? I'm gonna rent this for $3.59. Where's every penny, baby? <laughs> I told you before, my name's Conan. Stay with me. Oh, duh. Oh, sure your mom didn't ditch you, code duh. I just can't imagine oh, when oh, hey, hey, I mean, the hooking up would start. As I'm watching, I'm like, so is it now? Do you think now? Everybody. Probably. This is kind of a thing here. The arm is in place around the shoulder. Right. Post my first brother bear, I really liked it. It's really good. I thought that was a very sweet little tale we got going. It's quite beautiful. Now, they're really, <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to remain open-minded here. Denahi is hot. Denahi is hot. I like his little braid thing on yeah. the side of his hair. Yes. I like that. The problem that I am coming up on. You have one? It is, <laughs> even in the moments where I was like, okay, we could start here. Okay. This could be the moment where we start. It always loops back to family and brotherhood. Sure. <laughs> moments after. I would get too sucked into the narrative, to like the narrative at play 
Right. Where I would get too distracted, where I would be like, hold on, like, Kenai is revealing the, the truth to Coda. Right. We gotta pause and watch this. Right. When do you think you would start hooking up with someone during Brother Bear? The part that felt the easiest to get behind was when they made it to the salmon run. Right. And they were, like, all excited to be chowing down. Yeah. And just palling about. Right. That was the easiest starting point. Yeah. But it quickly goes off the rails. Or maybe even when they were riding the mammoths. Yeah, that could be something. I think I think it was, for me, the, the most simple one was the tell everybody I'm on my way. But then again, it also, I still am thinking about like, so then are you having sex the entire time? Like, are you hooking up? Right. For the duration it, of Brother right. Bear. Also, who put this on? Was it who you put, or them? Who put Brother Bear on? <laughs> Which one of you perverts? <laughs> this might be like A or B. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't put it on S. Yeah. But it's close. Yeah, whatever like third tier is for me, I think it's like third tier. It's like strong third right. tier lead and like might get bumped up right. in a second. Yeah. I feel like it's... It should sit in B tier then. Yeah. One time I hooked up to, um, in the background was the new version, the reboot version of Whose Line Is It Anyway? <laughs> <laughs> and that was because mm-hmm. the guy, the guy mm-hmm. earlier on the date said, you're kind of a silly girl, aren't you? So I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Theater Camp. I love this movie. Theater Camp was one of my favorite releases of last year, both because I was and am at heart a theater kid and also because I love Jimmy Tatro. He's just sexy. That's, yeah. (laughs) And to be honest with you, I love this movie too much and it's too close to my heart in terms of like where it hits at my own personal experience. I don't think that I could get through fucking this movie without getting angry. (laughs) I feel like, why are you not paying attention? This is crucial to understanding parts of my personality and who I am as a former theater kid, a former theater camper. If someone that I was interested in was trying to fuck me while I was making them watch theater camp, I'd be like, I am trying to sit you down and show you a movie that means something to me and you won't stop trying to fuck me during Joan Still. I'd actually be annoyed. This is B tier for me. 365 days. Now, I've never seen this movie and I don't plan to. I may not have seen 365 days, but I did see 365 days after. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> it's like the 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 third movie or the second movie. I don't know. It's it, it's in the 365 days catalog of movies. If you don't know what this is, 365 Days is like a really poorly written music video smut film that Netflix produced during the pandemic, I believe. This is when everybody was sort of getting into it and watching it. I never did when that happened. And then two years ago, I was invited to the premiere of the second or third movie, 365 Days After, and it was un fucking believable. (laughs) It's a half star movie if I've ever seen one. It is just about as bad as a movie can get. And I was invited to the premiere of it in New York. So I went and the director was there and there was like a cast Q and A afterwards. And I felt so bad because I'm like, they were seeing the audience reaction to this movie. And it was, people were dying laughing. People were laughing at this movie with everything in them. And then during the director and cast Q and A, I was like, I don't, feel they're in on the joke like I don't think that they know that we're laughing at them and that hurts (laughs) oh they're so bad though and the crazy part is that there's like very minimal dialogue in those movies they'll have like a very brief conversation and then it'll swing into like the most intense music you've ever heard and the whole song will play out while it's just like a montage clipped together rather than actually showing you the scenes of what's happening. Also, isn't the plot of the movie that she's like forced into a marriage or kidnapped or something and he's like a BDSM type? It's like a fucked up premise, whatever it is. I mean, it is horny, of course it is. This is like the Fifty Shades of Grey of Netflix. So it's, you know. (laughs) So is it insane that you would fuck to it? Still yes. Just knowing that at any moment without warning, it could swing into like, take me home by cash cash mid stroke. 
this close to orgasming and you have to hear take me home unannounced totally ill-fitting edm music poons, poons, poons. while you're fucking enjoy somebody might like that i don't know the actors are hot but it's all just terrible it's all cheeks i'll sit this one firmly in the middle we'll put this one at c tier because it's it's pretty bad but it's also understandable given the horniness of the film though i just feel that there are other more distracting things going on in the 365 days series. <laughs> when Harry Met Sally, now we're talking. When Harry Met Sally is in my top four. I love this movie. I was late to the game on this one. I only watched When Harry Met Sally for the first time in September of last year. Crazy town, I know, because it's like the most perfect romance movie. And it's, <gasps> and you know what? It's actually such a good movie to fuck to because in the beginning half of the movie, you're like, I hate Harry. He's the worst. Fuck this guy. I'm going to hate this movie because he's so fucking annoying. And I just, he's trash. Hate him. Throughout the movie, he grows on you. Unexplainably, he does. And then by the end, you're like, God damn it. I want to fuck him too. They're both so good. The chemistry so works. But there's something about the like enemies to lovers experience that I go through as an audience member while watching When Harry Met Sally that really does it for me. Forget about Sally. Me and Harry are going through an enemies to lovers throughout the duration of this movie. And for that reason alone, I'm fucking do it. Sorry. This is F tier because it is so fucking good. I'd actually be mad if you wouldn't fuck to this. Next up, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I have actually never seen before. Perhaps shocking. I'm excited about this one. I have high hopes for the fuckable vibes of this one. Rocky Horror has been on my list for a minute now. I know some of the music from Rocky Horror, which I feel like is very often the case with me with these types of things. I know the music from like a movie or a show before I know the actual show. I did like um, an artist salon where there were a ton of different artists that went to perform in someone's apartment and we were all placed in like different corners of the apartment and we all did our things. I was doing poetry, but something they did to like unite all the artists was they had everyone learn a dance number from Rocky Horror. I was absent <laughs> the day before, so I couldn't come and learn the dance because I had worked that day. Um, so I was not a part of this dance, but I do remember it. AC on. Extra fan going. Vibe set. Water jug in hand. Let's do the time warp again. Literally seen one and I'm already with it. I'm already getting the vibes. I could fuck right now, actually. Like, first of all, musical theater is the horniest thing. Yeah, I mean, this has to be F tier. This is like a horny gay feast. There's so much here to fuck to. Also, I feel like every person alive must be attracted to Tim Curry in this movie. At least every gay person, which is really, you, it should be like a prerequisite. You have to be gay to fuck to this movie. Juno, this is dark-sided. To fuck to a movie about teen pregnancy. Okay, let's think about this. This would feel like manifesting to me that I could get teen pregnant. <laughs> at the age of 27. I can't watch a movie about pregnancy while having sex. I would feel like I was willing it into existence. Like I just, I maybe a little too superstitious to fuck to Juno. That's crazy. I mean, Michael Sarah is sexy, but I surely there are better Michael Sarah movies to fuck to than Juno. A tier. <laughs> Gone Girl. Okay. You're hitting at my exact uh interests here another one of my favorite movies in my top four on letterboxd i love this movie i love amy dunn amy dunn apologist she's in absolutely nothing wrong leave my girl alone <laughs> like if i'm being honest i think that i really want to be domed by a woman in the way that amy dunn doms 
like fucking everyone. Sorry, you think that pathetic little Ben Affleck is the draw of Gone Girl? Absolutely not, baby. The draw is Rosamund Pike, covered in blood, acting insane, and I'm into it. <laughs> it's either like, I want a woman to do that to me, or I want to be the woman to do that to a man. Men can't enter their Amy Dunn era. That's banned. I'm allowed to engage in Amy Dunn smut with other women or me enacting it onto you, but you can't engage in Amy Dunn smut with me. I mean, maybe you can, who am I to say? <laughs> My man dressing up as Amy Dunn to role play Gone Girl, Amy Dunn. Dom, Amy Dunn dominatrix role play. Amy Dunn dominatrix role play. My man dressing up as Amy Dunn to dom me. Amy Dunn dominatrix role play. Yeah, I mean, if he commits to it, maybe. <laughs> like it's fucked up, but is it? Like maybe it's just right. E tier. Light work, okay? Sausage party. This one's diabolical to me. <laughs> this one is, I just fear like the type of person it takes to be like, you know what we should turn on right now as we're sort of steaming it up in here, sausage party. And they didn't say anything. A lot of these submissions, someone's like dot, dot, dot. I know, I'm sorry, dot, dot, dot. Cringe face, sad face, crying, skull emoji. Like there's some shame in this inbox, okay? This person just straight up hit me with sausage party nothing else i'm kind of a believer that food has no place in the bedroom period listen i have had bv one too many times to think that food has any business being inside or around me during sex i'm good totally good on that so a movie about animated food trying to escape a grocery <laughs> store Right? That's what that movie's about. I also saw this movie in theaters. Fucked up, I know. But there's just no world where this wasn't the worst sex you've ever had in your entire life. Because what absolute sociopath puts on Sausage Party? Yeah, this is S tier. I'm so sorry, but that's fucked up. You're fucked up for this and you should be on a list. <laughs> Someone damned me and told me they gave head in the theaters during Trap. Whoever sent me this DM, you're either a liar <laughs> or a criminal. So which is it? This movie just came out like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, maybe. So you're gonna be hard pressed to convince me that you were in a theater that was empty enough that you could discreetly give head in. What, you're gonna go see Trap at 11 a.m.? I bet. I bet, but you know, I'm willing to ignore the plot holes in your DM because the plot holes in this movie um, just totally blow yours out of the water, to be fucking honest. I wanna smoke what some of y'all are smoking. When I went to go log this movie on Letterboxd and saw not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six of my trusted friends and colleagues had rated this movie four out of five stars. I wanna smoke what you're smoking. Cause what? Did we watch the same movie? The rage I felt through my body realizing that I know people that rated Trap higher than Long Legs. Guys, we're living in a dark timeline. This movie was Cheeks. Let's be honest, let's say it. It was Cheeks. I gave it a 1.5 stars. Cheeks, you guys. And you know what? I saw someone, which this is so funny to me. And you know what? If this is the hill you're gonna die on and this is gonna be the thing that you're like, I'm gonna ride for this, I respect it, okay? But I saw someone that was basically like acknowledging that the movie is full of plot holes and the whole premise is like kind of silly and stupid. But their take was basically that M. Night Shyamalan has already secured himself as one of the greats so he can go ahead and make mid movies. And as an audience, it's fun to watch because he's just like here to have a good time and explore like the character dynamic he's fixated on rather than like make a fully and complete cohesive plot and story as a whole. So with that argument, he can really do no wrong. Cause you're like, I just love the guy 
and he's here to have a good time and so am I. <laughs> and if that's your take, I actually respect that. Sixth Sense is one of my favorite movies of all time. Trapped, however, is not a good movie, you guys. Why, the fact that I know six people who gave this movie four stars and some of those people ranked long legs low. Jail time, like jail time, you guys. That's crazy. Would I fuck to trap? To be honest, there's not much else to do during this movie. You know what's happening in that movie. You, the whole movie is shown in the trailer. Don't watch the trailer to this movie unless you want to watch the whole movie. I, like, yeah, I could have sex during this movie because my attention can absolutely be split. Did the movie make me horny? No. I did have to think about it though. C tier. Solid C tier. Even though I think you lied about this. <laughs> but you know what? I appreciate your audacity. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is, in my opinion, one of like the worst classic horror movies. The movie is dumb the whole way through. <laughs> it's just a little bit too far outside of the realm of believability for me. Like, oh my God, he's on the loose and he hasn't been caught despite using the loudest weapon he possibly could have chosen. <laughs> it's just like a silly, goofy movie to me. It's not very scary at all. <laughs> but despite the fact that I think it's a pretty mid movie and it's not a very scary horror movie, that doesn't mean that fucking to all the gore is necessarily uh, sitting right with my spirit. I'm trying to imagine like the scenario that something like this could happen. I'm dating someone, it's the fall, spooky movie, scary movie marathons, Texas Chainsaw Marathon, <laughs> fuck, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is on the list. We're half in, half out, one foot in, one foot out. Like I could, I get it, I see it happening. I'm there, I'm with you in spirit, of course. Um, A tier, I mean, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not that freaky. Wedding Crashers. Yeah, I know the exact type of man that wants to fuck to Wedding Crashers. And to me, it's like the same type of man that would also want to fuck to like Happy Gilmore. I don't know. Step Brothers. Well, I'm the type of person that would want to fuck to Step Brothers. So maybe not. Maybe let's not lump that in. Am I the type of person that would want to fuck to Wedding Crashers? Like, am I just in the demographic that I'm describing? I don't think I am. I would fuck to Wedding Crashers, though, but I wouldn't be the one to choose that. But like I could easily fuck Step Brothers, but that's just because I feel that I personally had a sexual awakening when watching Step Brothers for the first time when it came out. So that it's, it's more of like a nostalgia thing. To me, they're all sort of lumped together in the same group. Wedding Crashers, kind of a great choice of movie to fuck to. F tier for me, because I want to and I would. There was someone in here that said it wasn't me, but the emoji movie. And then shortly after somebody else submitted saying, the emoji movie. And I just need to know if, if you two are friends and one of you held the other at gunpoint to admit and you were like, well, I don't believe that they actually did it. So I'm just gonna expose them on their behalf. She fucked the emoji movie. <laughs> I mean, fucked up that you even watched the emoji movie. I didn't and I'm not going to. And fuck you for trying to get me to. <laughs> I mean, this is probably as S tier as it gets, no? It's 8 a.m. on a random Tuesday morning. I just ordered a bagel and matcha. And I'm, I'm gonna watch Wayne's World, I guess. <laughs> I've never seen this movie, but somebody out there has had sex to it. So checking it off my list today, I suppose, in honor of you. <laughs> As stated before, I've never seen this movie. So obviously I myself have not had sex to this movie. However, I have had sex with enough improv comedians to feel like I've had sex to this movie. <laughs> I just like imagining a man that's been like, you've never seen Wayne's World? <laughs> Making me watch it in bed like that. It hurts. It physically pains me. Can you see the pain on my face? I, I feel that you can see the pain on my face. That being said, I can't lie and say that I wouldn't. <laughs> And I feel like I have to say this just cause so many of you put this in the box, but a lot of you said Twilight. And a lot of you seemed really ashamed of the fact that you had sex to Twilight, but I feel that it's more shameful to not have sex to Twilight. That's a sexy movie. Like Twilight, the whole Twilight saga is horny. That movie is horned up. If you could sit and watch Twilight with a partner and not fuck to it, like that, 
seems like a compatibility issue to me. So Twilight is F tier simply because it feels like so intentionally a fuckable movie that no nobody should have an ounce of shame about fucking to Twilight. Anyways, I watched so many movies on Letterboxd. I think this morning I watched my 160th movie of the year or something crazy like that. So if you're interested in movies, you want to see my reviews, you can follow me over on Letterboxd at Maddie Drossback. If you want to see more of me, be sure to check out my podcast, Emotionally Online, which goes live over on the Emotionally Online YouTube channel, as well as all streaming services on Fridays. And you can follow me over on Instagram at Maddie Drossback to see what I'm up to during the week. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for listening. I will see you in my next video. Bye.